what makes a property appreciate in value let's talk about fair value the current rate per square meter so how do you estimate a house that is 20 years old that's in the market right now how to calculate the old house fair value how long has this house been in the market so this is a then a distressed situation at some point you'll hear about overcapitalization. Um, am I being tricked? What's maybe something is not adding up. So if you're wondering what happened to my shoulder, I was in a bike accident and the case is still under investigation. So since it is sub judicate, I'm not gonna discuss anything further about it but I survived, that's the most important thing. So the next topic is property appreciating in value. So what makes a property appreciate in value? So first of all, anything that's additional, like a value added service, anything additional like a garage, the size of the plot, um, that is a, a factor that will be highly considered because some people buy with the intention of being fixer uppers so they are looking at potential for expanding the property so if they can still build a granny flat at the back for a nanny or a cleaning person to live in the back or the grandparents like a granny flat to live in the back then that's a value added service whether the house has a swimming pool whether there's an electric gate in the front with fiber creed sealing off the entire property that would increase the value solar panels would reduce the electricity cost if there's lithium bat batteries included with the solar panels meaning that whatever electricity is um, sc scored from the sun those electricity will get saved into the batteries allowing the property to be completely be off the grid lately if you have a swimming pool on the property and you've got a borehole installed it means that you can get your swimming pools water from the bowl and people can shower shower with the bowl hole water then they could also help to reduce uh, municipal bills so that would increase or appreciate the property's value a garden is a double-edged sword some people prefer gardens and other people prefer low maintenance so a garden would be considered as as high maintenance either the owner himself is going to have to work in the garden or if he's going to rent out the property like me living in china if there's a garden then it would require the gardener to go to the property once a week and to keep the property neat it will require at least once a week so that would increase your overheads um, people working on the property once a week and those people can steal some of the laundry being hung on the washing lines so take that into consideration if something such as a sour because if you are gonna buy a house that is 20 years old chances are that the house is gonna come with a bath with old school tiles in them and because of water restrictions currently happening in south africa um, a shower will be preferred with modern tiles then inside of the house um, built-in cupboards like the ones in the back it's not fancy um, but they are very useful for packing and storing clothes in something something that you cannot touch um, like the location because of historical building sites in South Africa you have north of Fort Tracker north of the main road and south of the main road or the other side of the railway or near the railway so they are going for much higher prices because it's the areas are considered as much safer and you don't have noise complaints people playing their music loudly or sketchy people that walk in the streets with their gowns or 
this unwanted behavior so it's the reason why those areas uh, will appreciate more in value because they are desired locations if you go south of Fort Tracker now you're dealing maybe with drug infested areas so before you can buy a house you still have to consider whether there's a nearby drug house in the street um, they are selling illegal alcohol or drugs such as mandrake, tuck, heroin, cocaine so those would result in criminals being being infested in the in the area and those people can cause house breaks you would have to employ 24 7 security surveillance cameras by the way surveillance cameras will also appreciate your property's value um, so the house breaks if you you might need a dog on the property because you won't be there 24 7 so those dogs they will result in more expenses because you have to feed those dogs for those specific locations um, so location 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 it's probably the first thing before people even consider buying a property they will search for a specific area in a city so now let's talk about fair value um, I've done a little bit of research and came up with the following prices. So there's I because my property is in the Western Cape, I dug up the information for the Western Cape and then overall for South Africa. So for 2021 from January to March, the first quarter, uh, the current rate per square meter. So for dwellings under 80 square meters in the Western Cape to build a house in this day and time or a house that was built between January 2021 until March 2021 the cost for building per square meter was 5,798 Rand in the Western Cape and nationally in South Africa it was 7,000 in 10 rand then for properties above 80 square meters the cost in the western cape was 6745 rand per square meter and nationally it was 7676 per square meter then for flats and townhouses this is the property or my playground that i prefer um, because a townhouse you can convert splitting the house into two and renting it out or usually those townhouses comes with a granny flat so they've got very high potential for rental property so for townhouses and flats in the Western Cape the average cost per square meter was 7,529 rand and for nationally in South Africa it was 9,211 rand and now I wasn't I wasn't sure if this cost included the cost for an architect so from previous research the cost for an architect the lowest end that would mean a rural area in the countryside and the highest tier would be um, urban area CBD in the city so between 90 rand and 270 rand per square meter obviously there are people out of the norm that might be paying even higher per square meter for an architect so let's say you want to build two apartments at 150 square meters each equaling 300 square meters and you paying 270 rand for an architect the cost would be 81,000 rand and in this day and age a 300 square meters property uh, the calculations um, unfortunately they are turned around so I will read it for you 
So 150 square meters times 2 equaling 300 square meters times for a flat and townhouses rate of 7,529 would equal 2,200,000 258,700 rand. I'm repeating the cost for building two flats of 300 square meters would be 2,258,700 rand. And if you were to consider any other area, maybe like Houting or Durban, then the rate for you to work with would have been 9,211 per square meter. So that's your homework to calculate 300 square meters times 9,211. And then you can add the total, add the sum, plus the cost for the architect 300 times 270 and add the two together then you would get the cost of building an apartment of the cost of two apartments in Durban or Johannesburg so the total that I came up with if there was no architectural cost included in the stats that the government gave then it would have been for the for the two apartments it would have been 2,258,700 rand plus 81,000 for the architect equaling 2,339,700 rand so that would give you at the current rate current interest rate take maybe you would get prime I'm prime less less 1.5 percent i think so you would be looking at approximately after deposit and attorney fees you might be looking at a bond payment of 21,000 rand per month and now you have to con take into consideration that when you buy a house you also have to pay taxes to the municipality so you could look anything from 22,000 a month. So divide that by two apartments just to break even, you were looking at 11,000 rand per month. So because property is uh, the long is a long game or the uh, a long game, um, at first you can operate at a loss of maybe 1,000 rand or you can break even and just hope that the property will appreciate in value because you are not occupying the space in the long run your outstanding balance on the bond will decrease and then you will start making profit because every year um, because of inflation every year um, you will be able to increase the, the rent that you are charging and do know that um, in your first five to seven years you might end up with maintenance leaking geysers or leak geysers bursting or maintenance on tiles or cupboards so you might not be running at a profit um, to keep money available or liquid for maintenance because it, it if it's gonna if it if it can break it's gonna break Murphy's law now that you know the the amounts per average in South Africa now we are at fair value so when you are building a house new that will be the fair value of how much it will cost to build a house in this day and age now that you have the fair value of building a house at this day and age so let's say I gave you the cost per square meter um, in the Western Cape and nationally so now let's say there are some additional stuff um, that's not included in those statistics so maybe there are some value add on a property like a swimming pool and let's say for argument's sake it's 4 by 4 meters then you can contact a building contractor and find out 
how much they would charge you for a swimming pool of 4x4 four four and a pool pump maybe of 1100 watts and then you can find out what the cost would be in this day and age then you can add it to how much 300 square meters will cost then let's say for argument's sake there's a garage you can ask how much a garage will cost and you can take the measurements of the garage that you had in mind or maybe the house that you were looking at has got a garage and then you can use those measurements say maybe it's four meters wide and 10 meters long for argument's sake then you can go to the building contractor and ask for a quotation for a garage if there's a granny flat then you can measure the measurements of the granny flat the square meters um, if it's four by four meters or whether it's five by five five meters 25 square, square meters um, you can ask a building contractor now so now more or less you would know what an old property would cost in this day and age so now let's talk about uh, so how do you estimate a house that is 20 years old that's in the market right now versus buying a new house whether it's worth buying an old house and how to calculate the old house fair value okay so the starting point would usually be to go on property 24 and see if there are any open plots in that specific area so if there are 10 open plots to take the 10 plots and divide or add up the cost of all 10 properties and divide the total of the cost of the 10 properties divided by 10 to get the average price per property then you write down number one cost of plot but then you can divide the cost price divided by the square meters then you would get the cost per square meters then you can find out if you already know the square meters of the property then you can take the square meters and you times it by the local rate for architects so you can because i gave you the estimates of 990 rand per square meters and 270 you can maybe work with say the pro plot is 300 square meters you take 300 times 270 you will get 81,000. you can write that down now comes the tricky part so when you inspect a house it's 20 years old now you find there's a bath so now you need to get rid of that bath and pull the shower take out the old tiles um, the kitchen might have old cupboards you're gonna have to remove the kitchen cupboards and maybe if you are lucky they will still have some value and you can sell them second hand and maybe get some return um, the light switches might be in a poor condition so you might have to replace all the light switches which is very cheap um, the house might need a paint because old houses tend to have oil paint the house might have leakages in the roof um, you're gonna have to repair that it might have an asbestos roof and the insurance is not gonna cover an asbestos roof so you're gonna have to replace the roof if it's got a granny flat good for you you can you can calculate it and ask for the building plans whether that granny flat is going to be listed on the plans because the insurance is not going to cover it if it's not on the building plans um, so now that you have the calculations of the square meters of what it will cost in this day and age in the, so then you can compare um, the asking price on property 24 how it will compare to building the same house in this day and age and then you can ask a building contractor to give you a quote per square meter for 
removing a bathroom and putting in a shower doing the tiling for you and painting the house inside then you can speak to someone who's doing cupboards to replace the cupboards how much it will cost if that cost to to be a fixer upper if once you have that cost um, you can add that cost to the value of this day and age to build the same property and then you can compare property 24's price and the old house of property 24 versus the cost of this day and age and if they are equal that would mean that um, because there are some old stuff over here that the house is overvalued because you still gonna have expenses of replacing the bath the shower to put in a shower the cupboards and everything so now you are in a position to point out that um this house has got a, a old bath um you're gonna have to replace the kitchen cupboards it's still got mats you're gonna have to put in tiles so um you would like to negotiate on the price to maybe come down so if it's supposed to be 2.2 million so now you can say um i've done my my homework spoken to some contractors and this is gonna cost me more or less 300,000 so i would like to buy the house at maybe 1.9 million instead of going 2.3 million maybe they might say yes or if like me, I'm a little bit of a shark. If I can negotiate, if it's not below market value, if it's a little above market value, I will hit very low and hope to settle um, just under my target, just at my target price or under my target price to, to make some, to buy the house at a discount. If you find that after all your calculations in this day and age to build the same property and after the asking price on property 24 is here plus your what you've worked out what it's going to cost for a contractor to fix everything up to get it into a modern standard and you still end up here then you should be asking yourself um, am I being tricked? What's maybe something is not adding up? Um, now you can start asking questions to the real estate agent. But how long has this house been in the market? Maybe the owner is distressed. So distressed would mean that maybe they are in a divorce and they want to get rid of the house as soon as possible. Hence the low price. Or the owner is getting retrenched and he wants to get rid of the house as soon as possible so this is a then a distressed situation um, if in a situation like that the house has been newly painted then maybe the owner is trying to hide some stuff maybe they are asked maybe he had a poor foundation and the wall started cracking so now you need to pay closer attention to what you are buying if you are a case buyer especially those guys that have made made huge profits um, in the stock market that now want to expand into real estate and they want to go in case so do your due diligence always do your research so so that's all i can say and if you've done your homework like me back to front front to back and you still cannot come up with any reason why the property is that low then you are just buying a discount and the person don't know what they are selling so that is buying under market value so i've given you um, some information of what makes a property appreciate so at some point you'll hear about over capitalization this would be a situation where the surrounding houses in the area nobody in the area is doing any effort to improve their houses or extending the the property um, nobody's making an effort to 
to make the property appreciate. The crime in the area is very high. Um, houses in the area are struggling to sell beyond a certain price as in the there's a ceiling of where the price is kept so if you're gonna spend more money than a certain amount then you are gonna overcapitalize and nobody's gonna want to buy your house because they will be able to buy a house in a better location so let's make an example so let's say you're buying a house you are a fixer upper you're buying a house north of Woodtracker and the house is um, 2 million at fair value at fair value meaning in this day and time it's an old house it's at fair value it will cost the same to build the house and everything is fair it's market value um, and there are other, other houses in that same area going for 6 million meaning it's three times higher than the price that you bought the house for then it means that you have 4 million to before you can get worried or concerned about overcapitalization because other houses in the area are selling at much higher prices so you're not going to have a problem of renovating the house or the kitchen whatever but now i want to make an example of a house that i viewed i think it was valued at 3.5 million and another house in the area was selling at 2.4 million and those two houses were already struggling to to find buyers and they've been in the market for an extended period of time so the area is renowned for house breaks and it's situated next to a working class area and because of the old apartheid system um, this house is located in a middle class area but it's walking distance from the working class and in the location in the in a nearby location to where this house is being sold um, there are drug houses and theft is a problem so in this situation because the demand for houses of 3.5 million in that area was just there was just no demand and because you could get houses north of Fort Tracker for six, say for 1.9 million 1.7 million 2.2 million 2.5 million so it you would have been better off buying a house north of Fort Tracker so in a situation like that uh, if nobody's got swimming pools in the area don't go and build a swimming pool in your area if nobody has solar panels in, in that area on their roofs then you don't go and put solar panels on your roof if there's no potential to rent out flats in the area then don't then don't go and add extra rooms because if it's got no potential for rental property then you are just gonna hurt yourself because that would be a situation of overcapitalizing i mean if no other house in the area has got more than three bedrooms why would you want to have six bedrooms in in a house you are just jeopardizing yourself in a situation like that if you've reached your ceiling it's best to dispose your own house and to move to an area where um, you can expand to six rooms because another person buying the house will be able to 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 convert the house into rental property um, so with regards to overcapitalization in, in summary it would be when you are spending too much money for the specific area and there is no demand for the price or the amount of money that you are putting in the amount of money you are investing in there will be no demand for, from future buyers to buy your over your over your over capitalized property because 
you've now gone and built too many rooms put in solar power put in a swimming pool and people could get the same north of Fort Trekker in a much safer location for less or the same price um, something that I haven't mentioned so currently if you go on property 24 and you search a city and a province if you search a city and a province you will be able to see all the houses up for sale in a specific area you will be able to see houses that have been so sold recently um, you are also able to currently pay I think 79 rand to draw a report on a house that you want to buy currently in the market then you will be able to see what the historical prices were this would allow you to calculate the growth rate um, from the last time sold up until this point if you draw about three other or four other reports for a specific area then you will be able to estimate the growth rate for your house and other house other houses in in a similar in a similar area as yours um, what the growth rate were over the last 10 years so that would help you to determine um, what the future value will be for your house in maybe 10 years in the future then something I haven't mentioned um, there are also things such as sentimental value uh, in very scarce cases like if you would buy a famous person's house like a Nelson Mandela um, that house has potential to be turned into a museum like with Mandela's home and that house will be able to generate future income so that is sentimental value um, so you would end up paying a little bit more because of the, the visiting power that the house can draw um, then there are other types of sentimental value the design whether it's Cape Dutch or a famous architect who designed the house they would put you in a position where um, you might get a little bit more than the cost of building in this day and age um, so in summary I've talked about fair value the cost of building a property in this day and age over market value spending more money than you will get for the specific area under market value buying the house at a discount um, what is on the property or on the plot that's built it on the plot um, in this day and age it's way above what it would cost in this day and age I talked about appreciation what makes a property appreciate so that would be like if there are nearby schools in the location a supermarket a police station um, something that would make it depreciate a truck house factory noise uh, if there is a golf course it would increase the historical land the property was built on uh, the type of soil then you need the certificates I've mentioned before and value adds like if it's got a modern kitchen tiles building closets the type of lights in the house light switches a swimming pool property access like electric gates garages security cameras electric fencing uh, solar power electricity generator the cost of the architecture and rebuilding a house in in this day and age sentimental value and heritage um, that is it for property valuation thank you for watching